welcome to our conversation this week. Uh, we're going to be talking with Graham uh, Sakara. I'm Fran Serrano about sport as a business or sport business. What is sport business? What are the ideas behind sport as business? How are you doing, Graham? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, where do we get started? Um, sport as a business. You, you've had your own businesses. You've been involved in sport for many years, same as I have. Um, where do we get started with this topic? Well, I guess it's understanding the scope of, of business and sport, right? Because so often when you talk to people about sport, they envisage people running around, kicking a ball, you know, um, the, the kind of uh, doing side of sport as opposed to the actual uh, business side of it. And, um, you know, like you said, we've, we've both been involved in sport in that capacity, um, but also in terms of the capacity of running businesses, owning businesses, all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, yeah, get, getting a gauge on the scope of uh, what business can be in the industry, because um, it's huge, right? Yeah, and, but I, but I but I think, and this is from our for business and management background that uh, we have, I think when we talk about sport as business, many times we get sucked in and thinking of a business like you have your corner store, your retail shops, and 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 the, and the making money, or you mm. think of your big NFL, NBA teams, but sport as business can be a lot more simple, and mm. as we know, and, and many of us participate in sport, um, that there isn't necessarily uh, a monetary return, but there's still an organization, there's still a management team that is working in the background to make all the pieces work. So, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I think it's unfair to call sport as a business, sport as a business, because it makes us think of it as a, as a money industry, when sometimes yeah. in many cases in, in what we encounter, especially at the community grassroots level, um, sport is more of an organizational thing than just just a business. Yeah, exactly. And, you, and you've got um, all, all those different organizational formats and structures um, that, that sort of follow along with um, whatever uh, sort of idea or concept or um, sometimes it's it's an aspiration, right? You, you know, like to, to be a, a sustainable, uh, not-for-profit uh, type style um, where you're aiming to to good to, you know be a positive influence in the community as opposed to making money but obviously you still need to uh, match your expenses and, and pay salaries and all that kind of stuff so it's um, it's a really unique and interesting area to examine uh, what business can be and what what it can look like and and I guess we'll be using the term business in that, that big umbrella sense just within this conversation. And, and I think you've hit the nail on the head here when you're talking about we need to understand the, the purpose um, behind the organization or this sport as a business. What are they meant to do? What is their core jobs? What are they seeking? What is the social impact that the sport organization or the sport business is trying to generate? Um, you might have... Uh, an NBA team that for them, it is very important to have a winning team and to sell a lot of jerseys and get a lot of uh, ticket sales for people to come watch the games. But you might have an organization like County's Manicow Sport, which their core purpose is different, which is it's the promotion of physical activity in the region of County's Manicow. Uh, both are business operating organizations both need human resources, both need uh, budgets, both need to pay salaries. So both required employed professionals or professionals to lead um, and, and, and sustain those operations. Uh, but we need to understand the purpose behind the organization first and foremost. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I guess there's a little bit of an aside because obviously with um the conversations that we'll have with our business students um, that are interested in getting into the, the administration the business side of, of sport. Um, there's maybe a chance now to reflect on what you value as, a, as an individual. Because um, when it comes to you know, looking for, for employment or starting your own business or starting your own trust, 
um, a lot of what drives you is quite important. If you, you know, if you can align your values to uh, what an organization is doing or, or what an organization is that you'd like to start, um, it means you, you're you more likely to have a really enjoyable uh, career within that space as opposed to being in an organization that, that maybe doesn't align with the values that you hold. So, um, sorry, I realize it's a little bit of an aside to, to our conversation, but yeah, so, you know, for, for our business students listening is maybe have a, have a take a little bit of time to reflect on, on what you're looking for and what your values are and, and how that might align with, with some organizations. Talking about a val- the, the alignment of values, um, I, I always like to jump in and say here, when we talk about values, what are your values? The, a way of simply putting it to yourselves is about what is important to you? What is really yeah. important to you? That's your, that starts lining up what your values are. What is really important mm-hmm. to you? So if youth development is really important to you, well, you probably want to be stuck into that youth development space of sport if you want to go down the pathway of sport as a business. But if it's high performance, it's like, I want, I want to be involved on bringing more gold medals to New Zealand. Well, probably youth sport is not where you want to have your, most of your time spent because your mm-hmm. value, what you're valuing, what's important to you is achieving gold medals for New Zealand. So you need to start now maneuvering your work capacity into another spectrum of, our, of the sporting field. Um, so, we don't, so we don't stray off the topic too much, uh, Graham. Um, what are the first two, three sporting organizations or businesses that come to your head? Well, I, I'm a big fan of football. So of course, first thing that, that uh, comes to mind is, is the football organizations. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they are massive organizations. They have global reach. Um, they've got sponsorship deals with billions. They've got athletes with hundreds of millions, uh, if not millions. Um, it's, it's a huge, huge uh, business, if you will. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's from the, the sporting side. Um, I'll, throw you a curve, than... I'll, I'll stop you there with football and I'll throw you a curveball immediately. And this is the insight of our conversations, especially with students as we're learning and understanding our industries. Um, my son's best friend has recently become an all white. So he has been flown from Scotland to the United Emirates uh, to play in Abu Dhabi. Uh, He was going to start the day before yesterday when the game was canceled because everybody got COVID. Um, I could not believe that they get all their expenses paid as players, but they don't get paid to play for the All Whites. Mm -hmm. We know, like you're saying, football is a huge sport. There's a lot of funding and sponsorship behind so the money that New Zealand football gets to be able to travel and sustain their operation, to have a team competing internationally, how does that money get administrated? That is what sport as a business looks into. Mm. Another example on football locally, you have junior football or youth football, 18 and under. And the registration fees for a season for youth football are around anywhere between $200 to $300 to play for the season. But you might have another club that has the registration fees that are about $200 to $300. But on top of that, there are coaching fees that are charged per term. And the fees can go up to $1,000, $1,200 a year. When you have two sports clubs in the same sport, football, one charging $300, one charging $1,200 a year for a similar athlete to be able to provide youth football. What has allowed those decisions in terms of fees to be made? How is that money being administrated to actually deliver better sporting opportunities to our youth? These are the business decisions that we want Mm. students to actually be able to make, to be able to analyze and understand how sport is administrated for us here in New Zealand. 
Sorry, I interrupted, Definitely. but the, foot, the football spiked immediately for me. Yeah, and it's a great example because it's, it spans everything from grassroots through to the, the, the billion dollar industry that is the, the likes of the Premier League, La Liga, Champions League. Um, and you can see how you've got, you know, at that grassroots level, it's, it's very much about development and reinvesting into the community and into football. Um, and talking about that money, it's, it's not only just about the, the, the budget side of things, it's also uh, as sports business, business administrators or organizers, you've got to be mindful of how that impacts the community and, and um, you know, even how that's perceived. So uh, football is another great example was um, last year, they, they, there was some break-off teams that tried to establish a new uh, elite league um, yes. that didn't allow uh, other teams to come in or get relegated. So it was um, a, a closed-off league and there was a great deal of protest from the supporters yeah. because they felt that it was taking the club away from them. Um, that it was moving away from the, the essence of what football is all about. So, you know, as a as a administrator, as a business, um, or, you know, if you're the owner or what have you, your your decision making is quite complex. There's there's a lot of um, analysis and, and strategic thinking required because um, uh, yeah, it's it's you, you can go from the simple of balancing expenses with income um, all the way through to you know, how are we moving or how are we utilizing this income, this funding um, is, is going to be looked at um, because your, um, your fans, your client base, they really invested in your business, which again makes sports business so unique um, because it's, it, uh, uh, you, you know, you think sports is such a big part of people's identity or can be. Um, so the, the investment, the personal investment, the, the cultural investment almost is, is huge. So um, there's a lot of responsibility as an administrator, as a business person within sport as well. And I think what you mentioned there is key because that's what opens up so many areas of work within sporting organizations and sport as a business. Um, the fact that we are close to sport because we have an affinity, we have a passion, we have a cultural binding to sports teams or a sport in itself because mm -hmm. of how we've been brought up, et cetera. Um, but if we look at sport just about how much money it's going to make me, like sometimes business is looked at, we are disassociating the purpose of what actually brought us to the sport. And that's the key. Uh, we need to understand that the stakeholders and those people that are actually delivering invested in terms of working and administrating sport, they're not only there for the job, they're there because there's a passion, there's a there's a stronger bond to um to the sport or to the activity altogether. Um, so we don't extend ourselves too much longer in this introduction to what is sport of uh, sport as a business, uh, Graham. Um, can you think of some areas of of work that having strong knowledge and understanding of sport of business that it can take us? Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, again, just from personal experience. Um, and I think we've spoken a lot about community focused and based businesses. There is also the, the for profit side of, of business. And um, that's a really valuable and important area of sport as well. Drives opportunity, it drives innovation. Um, and, you know, so the, for, again, from my own personal experience, uh, many years ago now, uh, when I was personal training, um, you know, you, you are offering a really valuable service that helps a lot of people, but you're also doing it to make a profit. Yeah. Um, and you can do really well in that space. And a big chunk of that is obviously your expertise and, and how you deliver the product and the service. But if you don't know the business aspects to it. You can also um, miss opportunities. You can actually make mistakes that might actually close your business and that's your livelihood, right? You know, when you are running a for-profit business, um, it needs to make money because that's how, you know, in, in that case is like a sole trader, 
yeah. you've got to treat it yourself. You've got to pay your, your bills or your advertising, um, all of those those things. So you you've got to um, you, you you need to be mindful and be aware of the business aspect of things. And there's a lot of tools that you can utilize um, that um, uh, you, you and I will cover across uh, the, the next um, weeks or within our, within our papers that, you know, are, are really valuable and, and can help um, make sure that you potentially avoid pitfalls and, and also um, can make the most of the good work uh, that you're capable of with your, with your skills that you have. So basically, to, to, to summarize, is understanding that you might know your craft very well. You might know your sport. You might know your exercise. You might know your strength conditioning very well. But you need to back it up with those skills in the marketing administration side of running your sport organization and your sport business. Because if that cannot sustain itself, you won't have a space to actually deliver your craft. Um, yes. and, and, that's, and that's very, very important. So whether it's a for-profit organization where it's, an, it's a, a business that's making money, let's call it Bike Barn, that they sell bikes and they need biking specialists that actually know how bikes work so they can sell the bikes and sell a lot of bikes and make a lot of money, or whether you are a strength um, a PT, and you are actually taking clients and taking them through the moves and you need to know what is to best uh, suit your clients so they can get fitter. Um, you need in the background know how to run your business. And you might actually be the director of sport for or director of rugby or netball at a sports club. And you need to know how to group and manage all your volunteers. All those are the skills that are encompassed in what is sport as a business. And the most important thing of all is us loving to watch sport and running events. Um, that's a big part of sport as a business and, and newer fields that are coming up, uh, up now with uh, around the analysis and the using of, of data. Um, a recent conversation that I had was that the professionals nowadays in whatever field, the better knowledge that they have in the use of technologies and adaptable in their use of technology, the better suited they will be to take on responsibilities with regards to use of data that comes through uh, businesses and organizations. So leaving, leaving it on that note, um, hope you enjoyed this introduction on what is sport as a business. If you have any questions, just post them up. We'll be happy to respond to you. Take care. <laughs>